Hi everyone, it's Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Yes, welcome to my kitchen. Really cool class we are doing today. I know there are some excited people out there who have been waiting for this class quite patiently. So congratulations for being patient. Now is the time we're going, I'm going to teach you guys how to make sugar-free, super healthy marshmallows. And let's be honest, who doesn't like a lovely, light, pillowy, soft, like a cloud of goodness, of sweetness in a marshmallow. I know I, for one, am pretty excited that I am able to share this recipe with you guys. It, of course, is sugar-free. It has to be. Of course, it's sugar-free. It is also gluten-free. It is dairy-free as well. And what's really incredible about this recipe, which I'm really excited about, is the health benefits. And I will discuss the health benefits with you as we are going. Good evening to Leslie. Thank you for joining me tonight, my darling. I'm sure you're going to be enjoying this class. It's a good one. It is e they're pretty easy to make too. They are pretty easy to make. There are a few bits and pieces that you may need to go and purchase, but apart from that, the, the technique's actually pretty easy. You'll be surprised how easy it is to make marshmallows. And one of the things I love about them is that this is the ideal little treat you can send off to your little ones who may be going back to school or your big ones who are going back to work. It really doesn't matter. They are fabulous. Hello to Leanne and to Judy as well for joining us on tonight's class. So come on down to my bench. Let's get into the recipe. It's a good one. I'm, I'm excited, sorry. I'm excited. So come on down to my bench. You can see I've got my little machine here. Don't need it right now. But I do have my little, my little cake mixer there. So this is one of those recipes that I would definitely suggest that you use a cake mixer for it. So I've got my pot on here. And I have it on my scales. So I'm me you know me. I like to measure things straight into my scales. So the first thing that you are going to need, because of course marshmallows are sugar-free and traditionally they are not. <laughs> so we will be using today our zero as um, pure erythritol, zero as sugar. Um, so of course there's no calories, there is uh, no attack on your glycemic index. So it's this is a great recipe for anyone who's diabetic or anyone who's pre-diabetic or anyone who's just watching their weight. So into my little pot here, I'm going to be putting the zero as sugar. But what I did to it before... I, um, I put it in there as so I actually made it into a powder as you can kind of see it looks a little bit like icing sugar so in order to powder your um, your zero as sugar you either need to use a very fast little blender and to, and to blend it up until it literally looks like icing sugar it's really really fine the other thing that you can do and this is how I make my powdered sugar is I actually use a little spice grinder a little coffee grinder same thing um, I can fit around about 50 grams, which is nearly two ounces in there at the same time. I blend away for a couple of seconds and I am left with this wonderful bowl of what looks like icing sugar. It is powdered erythritol. So you're going to need, for your powdered erythritol, you're going to need 240 grams of your powdered erythritol, which is eight ounces. Now this does make quite a decent size of marshmallows. You can of course halve this mixture if you want to. So into our pot we go straight away. We put in our, our icing sugar, ha <laughs> ha, powdered erythritol. Remember this is sugar free. And the other thing about when you use our zero sugar is that this is gonna freak you out. Imagine eating a marshmallow that is actually going to protect you from getting cavities. So we're not talking about kids. Zero as sugar actually protects the, the, our teeth from getting cavities. It provides a little film over our teeth and will actually help to fight off any cavity forming bacteria. How cool is that? So not only are you having something delicious, you are looking after your oral hygiene as well. So we've got our, we've got our zero as sugar in there. Remember 240 grams or eight ounces. And then I'm going to be taking some warm water, not hot, just warm water, like just tepid water. And I've just put my scales onto zero because I want to get this right. And I'm going to be putting into here 120 mils, which is four ounces of water, of warm water. Keep an eye on your scales. You don't want to put too much in here. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a delicate procedure, but it definitely um, needs to be measured as opposed to just guessed. 
give that a bit of a stir. You can already see it starting to just break down. And the last thing I'm going to add into this before I put it on the heat is I'm just going to put in two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract is going to go in there as well. So those three, and you know, actually, you know what? Let's go with just a pinch of salt, balance out the flavor. Pinch of sea salt or pinch of mineral salt goes in there as well. Give it a bit of a stir, and then I'm just going to pop this on the back element here and turn it on to about medium and just let it, just let it do its thing for a while. And what I'm trying to do is I'm wanting to bring it to the boil, dissolve the sugar that's in there, and as soon as that's kind of come to the boil, the sugar's dissolved, so it's gone clear, I'm going to take it off. So while that's happening, I can prepare the rest of the ingredients. So now I'm going to be working straight into my mixer bowl. So if you have a cake mixer, like I have here, definitely by all means grab out your cake mixer. It's definitely going to help. But you can also use a handheld you know, electric whisk as well. I wouldn't suggest you attempt this with muscles only because it does require about 10 to 12 minutes of straight mixing to get the air. So um, with that on, I'm going to go back to my warm water and I'm going to put another 120 mils. Remember that's four ounces of water goes into there. It's always a good idea to measure liquids, by the way. You definitely get it precise, which is what you want. So 120 mils, four ounces of warm water. And now we're going to add the part that's going to bring it all together. So what I have here is gelatin. This is grass-fed gelatin. I will be discussing all the health benefits of gelatin as we're going. Um, I'm using Australian um, gelatin, so it comes from Australian cows. Yes, it is grass-fed, very good for our digestive health, which I'll talk about, plus loads of other amazing things that gelatin is really good for. So over to our water, you want to add in, ideally sprinkle with a, with a spoon, 20 grams, which is two thirds of an ounce of our gelatin. So gelatin is flavorless, it is colorless, well it is when you use a good one, um, and it's tasteless. So you wanna add 20 grams of this, and this is what helps it thicken and get lovely and gorgeous, but it is also um, what is used to make most jellies. So you're kind of making a little bit of a jelly here. So whisk it straight away. As soon as you've got the sprinkle happening, the next thing you want to do is whisk it up. Make sure that gelatin has dissolved. And you definitely do want to get like a good quality gelatin. Um, you know, it, it, I think this is a, this cost me about $9, but um, you only need <laughs> 20 grams at a time. You can make a lot of marshmallows with $9, put it that way. So a little does go a long way. So give it a really, really good whisk. And we're just going to pop that off to the side just for a second. I want to turn around and have a look what's happening here. I'm going to show you guys. So I'm not sure if you can see that. It hasn't quite, it's a little bit cloudy. So for me, it's not quite ready for the next stage. So I'm going to put that back on. Got that on. It's a medium, medium heat. It's just kind of heating through. The last thing that I want to do is to overheat this and let it bubble and dissolve down too much. So just keep a careful eye on the back stove here and it's looking pretty good. So um, at this point in time, with our gelatin, like I said, it, it, they say it has no smell, but I can smell it a little bit. And it kind of reminds me of making jelly on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Oh, what? someone's asked me what the brand is. The brand is, I don't have my glasses on. No, that's not the brand, but I literally don't have my glasses on. I think it says, could you just tell me what that is, please, Coco? Can you see that? Nutra Organics. Oh, thank you, Coco. It's Nutra Organics. I will show you. It's a pretty little packet, as you can see. A little bit old school, and it's in a black pouch. So Nutra Organics. I bought this at a really good IGA. Um, you can get them from the health food store as well. And um, you, I use these to make gut gummies, of course, little gummy bears. Um, and now you are going to be using these, this to also make these amazing marshmallows. So back to my little liquid, I'm looking again, and it's, oh, it's almost there, I'm gonna show you, the, I wanna show you the progression here. 
So you can sort of see it's starting to clear up. It's a little, it's a little bit cloudy. And that cloudiness basically means that the um, erythritol has still not quite dissolved. And it's really important that you do dissolve the erythritol because if we didn't dissolve it, it, your marshmallows might turn out a little bit granular. So you might have a feeling of grain through there. So it's looking good, like I said, coming together nicely. Now, by the way, these marshmallows uh, will not come out any color bite white because I do not use food coloring in any of my food. As you all know, if you have a natural food coloring that you would like to add to this, of course you can, but stay away from the artificial colors, the artificial flavors as well. We want to go as natural as possible. All right, so I've just got a few bubbles that are just kind of starting to happen here, which is great. And our wonderful gelatin is now, uh, our wonderful red top is now dissolved. So as soon as you get a few bubbles around the edges in your pot, and you can pick up your pot, and you can see that it's completely translucent, so you can see through it, it's, it's clear, then we know we're up for a winner. So at this point in time, I get rid of my whisk. At this point in time, we're going to be putting our mixer bowl onto the stand mixer. Just like this. Yep. I'm using the whisk attachment because we are going to be whisking it quite a lot. And it's really interesting. A lot of people have asked me when they've seen my marshmallows, they're like, oh, what? how many egg whites are in there? There is no egg whites. <laughs> this is all the ingredients apart from a little bit more flavor, which I'm going to show you in a second. So um, that is ready to go. Back over to my little pot. Now this is when you can decide what flavors you want to add. You could just stick with plain old vanilla just like that. But I find vanilla is a nice base, but I like to add more flavor. And this is the sort of flavors that you can consider adding. For instance, you could add rose water, which is amazing. This is my favorite, by the way. You could try using some orange blossom water. I have a little bit of peppermint water here as well. Um, you could use almond. You could use my amazing pandan extract. It's up to you what flavors you add. Like I said, I'm going to be using rose, and I'm going to be putting into here... I'm going to start off with about half a tablespoon of rose water. It's quite powerful, half a tablespoon. But I'm going to keep trying it to see what I think as it's going along. So with the beta whisking, you want to start adding in the liquid. But make sure this is on. Make sure the whisking is happening. Alright, keep on tipping. Keep on whisking. Fantastic. Actually, before I do that, before I turn it on full bore, this is a nice idea to do. That if you are using a stand mixer especially, you can get a bit of splatter. So what you want to do at this point is you want to turn it on full. I would suggest, like you said, covering it with a tea towel. And you want to leave it to whisk on high for between 10 to 15 minutes and that's all going to depend on how fast your your mixer is so if you're using one of those hand ones it could take you all of 15 minutes um, I find with this one it takes me about 10 to 12 minutes to get the full whisk so I'm going to be moving this away by the way I'm going to be putting this um, out, of, out of shot so it's not too noisy and we're going to have a bit of a chat about the health benefits while it's whisking for us so I'm just going to move it out of the shot just ignore it for now it'll be a bit noisy I'm putting the tea towel <laughs> over it as well, by the way. Right. We have 10 minutes to fill in, but that's okay. The reason why it's okay is because I have lots of really awesome health tips that I would like to share with you guys. If you've got any questions, um, I see a question there. What about beetroot juice for pink coloring? I don't know if I'd want to have beetroot flavored marshmallows. If you could just add just a touch of it without getting any flavor in there, and I think with the rose that could work quite nicely. I just want beetroot marshmallows, but just a touch of color to get a lovely little pastel flavor going. As I was saying before, I really like to use um, pandan, which is a Southeast Asian um, flavoring agent. It's a big green leaf, and they use it in custards, they use it in curries, and it, it, it's kind of like they refer to it as the vanilla of Asia. It's got a very distinct flavor and I make a pandan extract 
for anyone who currently has my ebook that came with the ice cream plate, the pandan extract recipe is in there. And it does make your marshmallows a little hint of green, which is very exciting. You could add um, matcha, a little bit of matcha tea in there as well, like a really strong green matcha. And just put a couple of drops of that in there. But I'll leave the flavorings completely up to you. You decide which ones you want. And if you want to get different colors, then try maybe the beetroot. But just go quite, go slowly with it, uh, for sure. You don't want to go too beetrooty. So um, the beautiful thing is I was saying about the marshmallows. So number one, as you know, it's made with zero as sugar, which means zero calories. So no effect on your glycemic index. It's okay for people who are diabetic and want to spike your insulin levels or raise your blood glucose, which is amazing. It's perfect for people who are watching their weight or wanting to maintain their weight because it's not a sugar, but it's about 80% of Swedish sugar. But the other beauty about our particular brand of Zero um, Erythritol is that it has zero laxative effect. Some erythritols, they're made in an inferior way and they can cause um, gastrointestinal upsets. Our one doesn't do that, so that's really cool. And the other thing I was saying before about, um, about Pure Erythritol is it supports your oral health because it, it creates this really amazing film over your teeth that actually protect the teeth from um, marauding uh, bacteria that want to create holes and cavities. I mean, how cool is that? It's not often that you can give your child or yourself a little sugary sweet treat and say, actually, I know it's supporting your teeth and not um, making holes and making cavities, which is so incredibly cool. So the sugar part of this, the zero part of this is phenomenal in itself. But then, of course, there is the gelatin, or gelatin, whatever you want to call it. Now, um, gelatin is derived from collagen. I'm sure a lot of you have heard how healthy collagen is. It, um, it is extracted mainly from the skin and the bones of the animal, the tendons and the ligaments. It's then cooked up, the collagen, and it creates gelatin. So um, gelatin is a very good um, source of protein. It has almost every single protein uh, amino acid in there. It's not quite a complete protein, it does lack one amino acid, but it has all the other eight amino acids that help to become these building blocks for your body. So this is a great source of protein. In fact, gelatin is 98 to 99% protein and you know how good protein is for you so protein will do really cool things like help you to feel fuller longer which is really good if, if you are um, wanting to watch your weight so it helps to keep you satisfied which is really really nice but it works as this building block and a building blocks of your body so it helps to build you know fibers and muscles and tendons and all those things that our bodies need just to stay functioning that's what protein is for so uh, 99, 8 to 99% protein, which is what, uh, what, what this is, it has basically no fat and almost zero carbs, which means it's once again extremely low in calories. So you've got zero sugar, zero calories, gelatin, hardly any calories, it's so incredibly low in calories as well. You have just created, you know, well, we're just creating marshmallows that are so good for our health. So the other thing about gelatin, it's good for our hair, it's good for our skin because it comes from collagen. The other thing about gelatin, it's good for our gut health. So there is this amino acid in gelatin and it's called glycine. Now glycine is not only really good for your brain health, so it supports the health of your brain. Can it get any better, right? I mean, it's amazing. this is amazing stuff. But gelatin, uh, gelatin also does this lysine, glycine amino acid, also supports and restores the lining in your gut. So if you're someone who has in the past suffered from, you know, leaky gut or, you know, have had um, digestive issues with bloating and all that sort of stuff, gelatin can help support the repair and the growth of the lining of your gut that is there to protect the rest of your body from harmful toxins. 
So it is really, really good for your gut health. I mean, I could literally, you know, I, now I'm not going to eat it straight from the packet because it's tasteless and odorless and a bit boring, but when you mix it into things like marshmallows, yep, I can totally eat that. When you mix it into things like my gummy bears, which by the way, the recipe is in the same ebook that comes with the ice cream plate, so my, my healthy ice cream ebook. I also have a recipe for gummy bears made with gelatin in there, and they're really, really good. They're very exciting as well. So, you know, we've got all these amazing, amazing benefits from gelatin, as well as being low calories, you know, as well as being good for our gut and amazing for our brain. It is one of those, you know, one of those all-round foods that we can actually eat in quite exciting and sneaky ways. Because I don't know many kids who will turn these marshmallows down because they just kind of taste like marshmallows. And you're like, yes, I'm supporting their gut, I'm supporting their teeth, I'm supporting their brain, I'm not putting them on a sugar rush. Hence why I thought that these marshmallows were going to be the perfect, perfect little cooking class for us tonight because all week we are doing back to school recipes. Well, back to school, back to work however you want to look at it. So I'm going to go and grab the, um, and see how it's going. Not, I don't know how long it's been, I don't know how long I've talked for, but I'm going to go and have a bit of a look, see what's happening. Ooh. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Woo, look at that! Check it out! Oh, I didn't see how long that was. <laughs> I forgot to check. That was about 10 minutes, wasn't it, my love? Look at this, guys. How I know it looks like pavlova, and I teased, I teased everyone last week. I, I just took a video of this as I was, this when I was recipe testing, and, um, and said, what do you guys think I'm making? Someone knew I was making marshmallows. But look at that. It looks like marshmallow fluff. Isn't that awesome? So that is after, you know, around about 10 minutes of whipping. Um, I would go a little bit further. So it's a good idea that as you are whipping up your stuff, you can kind of see why using a stand mixer is so much easier than using a hand mixer because you don't have to stand there and mix it. You can have chats with people like I did. So, uh, so I'm going to probably just give it a little bit more. I would normally give this about another, say, two to three minutes because the type of consistency I'm looking for it just starts to, like when I put my spatula in, it leaves these wonderful patterns in it, I find, like little blobs. So it's nearly there. It's nearly there. You want it to be nice and thick and glossy. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could just see how glossy this is. This is just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, now is also a good time to have a bit of a taste because what you want to see is how what the flavor is like. So, Bit of a taste. Wow, that rose water. I think what I put in one tablespoon. Perfect. Whatever I put in, I can't remember if it was one or. That's perfect. It's not too overpowering because you know rose can get very overpowering. I'm having another one. Mmm. Wow, it just kind of it just dissolves in your mouth. It's amazing. So maybe another thirty seconds. Sorry, got to say, if you wanted to add more flavour at that point, I would. Dribble, dribble, dribble a little bit more. Like if you want to put more rose water, just dribble it. Like, you know, dribble, dribble, don't, don't smash it in because you want it to disperse. So just put, you know, a teaspoon in and just kind of sprinkle it around and then whisk it up for another sort of 30 seconds. Have a look. Have a taste. <laughs> Totally, totally happy. Like I'm in my marshmallow happy place right now. And my <laughs> someone said, Where's the main man? I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's over there. He's keeping an eye on it. He can't believe. I've been telling him all about gelatin all day. I've been telling him about the health benefits, and he and I both are just, you know, like, wow, this stuff is so cool. It's so funny too, because 
Yesterday I had a one-on-one -on -one, um, nutritional session with a lovely lady. And her and I were discussing at length um, this amino acid known, known as um, glycine and its benefits and its benefits in helping to restore your gut lining and its benefits in helping to improve sleep patterns all that from gelatin who would have thought right who would have thought okay all we need to do now is set set it on fire no not set it on fire just set it <laughs> definitely not on fire even though even though, let's be honest, once these are actually firm, they're firmed up, you could make s'mores. You could make healthy s'mores. You could make, did you hear me? You could make healthy s'mores, guys. You can, honestly. All right, I've got a little container. Notice it's got really high sides. You're wanting something that's about eight inches by eight inches or thereabouts, which I apologize. I don't know what the uh, centimeter is for that, but I'm using my other tins eight by eight inches. It's like a brownie tin. You definitely need baking paper because otherwise it will stick. So get yourself a, a decent amount of baking paper to line your tray or your container with. Plastic is absolutely fine because this does not get baked. It just sits in the fridge. But make sure your baking paper comes up the sides, yeah? So you want it right up the sides there because as you can see, there's a lot of fluff that needs to go in there. This is not a little bit of marshmallows. Like I said, this is a lot. So, you know, feel free to half the recipe if you want to. But in saying that as well, they actually last really well in the fridge. Like I've had, I had a batch in there for five days because I was testing out how long they last. And yeah, five days, they'll still fine. So even if you wanted to make these and then obviously leave them in the fridge in a, in a sealed container, they're going to last for a while. So just put in that flat. Yes. Can you use agar agar? I, I actually don't know, sorry. I know that gelatin is from animals and for our vegan vegetarian friends. Um, I haven't tested this recipe with agar agar. Um, so I don't, I'm sure you can. I just don't know what the quantities are, I'm afraid. Might be something you, you, you might be able to research if you would like. So we're putting that into there using our spatula. And then just smooth it off a little bit. Or not, if you like to have little peaks. But look at that. That's a lot of marshmallow, right? You're going to have really big squares of marshmallow. So that goes there. Oh, and then we get one more sheet. One more sheet. We need to cover the top of it. One more sheet of baking paper. And we just carefully put that on the top of the... Like you want to put it right onto the surface of the marshmallow, yeah? So put it right onto the surface. And then I'm going to hand that off to Coco and she's going to pop that in the fridge. Now this needs to set or harden in the fridge for a minimum of eight hours. Um, but I normally do mine overnight. I find that that's usually best, so 10 to 12 hours. So I'm going to pass it off to Coco. Thank you very much. And I'm going to show you one that I prepared earlier. All right, so here it is. I am peeling, peeling off, see if the paper does, even though you can stick it right to the top, the paper actually comes off really easy. And the first thing I want to point out is there's been a little mouse, can you see? Can you see what that little mouse has done? <laughs> there's a corner missing. I've had a wee mouse <laughs> in the kitchen. So um, this is, as I was saying, this is the size, it's like a brownie pan I use, it's 8 inches by 8 inches, which is just perfect for this amount. So you take it out, and what you're looking for when you know it's been in the fridge long enough, is it's really dry. So at the moment, you know, because it's just obviously made, the mixture is quite wet, and what you're looking for is a dry mixture. And it's so dry that you're able to peel off that paper, can you see how easy... That has peeled off for me down the side there. That's what you're after. Everything, this one is a little bit wetter, but this top here is quite dry. So all you need to do after this is take yourself up a big knife. And ignoring the fact that I've had mice in the kitchen and the fridge who have eaten the corner of the marshmallow, I know who it is. I know. <laughs> I know who that person is, by the way. And no, it's not Mahei, it's not him, it's another person who likes sugar in this house. And then you just want to cut up your, whatever size marshmallows you want to make. So I'm just going to go for big, fluffy squares, because why not? 
And now just imagine with this big fluffy square that you sandwich this marshmallow. Let me get it off there, peel it off the bottom. You are able to sandwich that. Look at that. You've made marshmallows. Well, we've made marshmallows. You're able to sandwich that marshmallow into a s'more. You can make your own s'mores. My healthy digestive biscuit, marshmallow, toasted, sugar-free chocolate. You've made your own s'mores. All right, what does it taste like? Are we ready for the excitement? It is very exciting. Mmm, it's so good. That is amazing to believe that firstly, we can make healthy marshmallows. They have virtually no calories. Amazingly good for our gut health, our brain health. You know, our hair and our, our skin and our bones and our, and our joint mobility. But they taste fabulous. So I hope you have enjoyed. <laughs> and it works like a marshmallow in your mouth too. It's really fluffy and then it just dissolves, which is exactly what you want for a marshmallow. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode. I have definitely enjoyed bringing it to you. I hope you're enjoying our back to school week as well. It's all our healthy nut free treats and, and muffins and all sorts of wonderful things that people can take to work, they can take to school or they can take to their home office wherever you may be working from. Enjoy this recipe. Let me know what you think. I will be sharing the PDF version with you tomorrow morning on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Keep an eye out for it. Until then, be well, be safe, and I will see you next time back here in the kitchen. Bye-bye.